Psalms 40, the 40th Psalm. Uh, there's a lot to be said out of this psalm, a lot of wonderful thoughts. We're just going to read the first part of it. The Bible says in verse number 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and establish my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your excellent greatness, your tender mercy and loving kindness. God, thank you for the news of the five precious souls whose eternity was changed uh, over at the jailhouse. Uh, by being saved by the good grace of God. God, I'm glad you love sinners. I'm glad you came to bleed and die for sinners. Uh, I'm glad you made a way for sinners to be saved by the good grace of God. Uh, Lord, there was no way we could get to you, but I'm glad you made a way uh, where you came to us and made a way where we could be saved. Uh, Lord, we just bless you for it. Uh, now, Father, I pray for Miss Crystal. You'll help her in the hospital. I pray for Brother Eddie. You touch him and help him. I do pray for Brother J.D. and Brother Bobby. You'd be with them. Uh, I pray for Brother Dave Woosley. You'd touch him and help him. I pray for Miss Lexi. He's facing surgery in a couple weeks. You'd be with her. Uh, others that uh, are sick today, I pray you'd touch them. Those that are providentially hindered, uh, you'd be with them. Uh, but for the next few minutes, Father, I pray you'd put a hedge about this place. Uh, I pray you'd bind the powers of hell uh, and the sorry no good devil himself. Uh, I pray that the Spirit of God would have free course in the service. Uh, he wouldn't be grieved or quenched. Uh, God, I pray he'd be allowed to do his office work and touch hearts. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, every saint of God would be revived again. Uh, God, I pray if there be anybody in our midst that's unsaved, uh, that today would be the day. Uh, the blinders would roll off their eyes. They'd see a need of a Savior. Uh, and they put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ even today. Uh, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help us now from the word of God. We'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's a in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus, we ask it all. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice... Uh, is the compliance. Uh, uh, David's writing this psalm, uh, and David said, uh, I waited patiently uh, for the Lord. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, waiting is a hard thing to do, uh, and being patient is even harder to do than wait. Uh, 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 but then I say this, uh, and I've said this a few times, uh, our timetable and the Lord's timetable aren't always the same. Uh, what we think might be urgent may not really be urgent. Uh, but I do know this, the Lord knows what's best. Uh, he does all things well, uh, and he always moves right on time. Uh, but we find that David waited for God. Uh, boy, Brother Bob, what a difference our world would be if people uh, would just wait on God before they'd react or, or wait on God before they'd even act. Uh, what a blessing for those uh, that have learned the secret uh, uh, to have a joyful, wonderful life. Uh, it's about waiting on God and letting God work through your life. Uh, we see that David's uh, in a mess, uh, but he waits patiently on the Lord. Then notice, if you will, the crouching. Look what the Bible says. Uh, I waited patiently for the Lord, uh, and he inclined unto me. What that inclined means is God crouched down there to where David was. Huh? Hey, uh, uh, there are times uh, I can't even get a prayer to the ceiling. There are times uh, 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 when I'm a low place. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, when I'm in a low place, that's no problem for God. Uh, hey, he's the one that can make a way when there is no way. Uh, when there was no hope for us uh, uh, to ever be restored to God and go to heaven, uh, God made a way by sending his darling son for God's love the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish uh, but have everlasting life 
life. Uh, God made a way. Uh, uh, listen, David's in a mess. Uh, David can't get to God. Uh, but God stops what he's uh, doing. Uh, and he inclines to where David is. Uh, and just crouch down there. Uh, hey, I'm glad when there's times uh, when I don't even know he's around. Uh, he can step into my situation. Uh, crouch down to my low estate. Uh, and help me. Uh, and bless me. Uh, and do something for me. Uh, and he'll do something for you. Uh, we see the compliance. We see the crouching. But notice uh, the close listening. Look what he says. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. Now listen, I'm going to speak for David right now. Who am I that the king of all glory would even care to come where I'm at and then hear my cry? Uh, I've got news for you. Uh, uh, the Lord's interested in hearing from us. Uh, the Lord loves us more than we know what love is. Uh, the Lord sent his son to die for us. Uh, and he said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Uh, and God's interested in you. Uh, God's concerned about you. Uh, he's concerned about you today. Uh, but he's more concerned about your eternity. Uh, and God's just waiting for you to call upon him uh, so he can come and hear and listen what you have to say. Uh, there's no problem problem too big. Uh, there's no situation too small uh, that God's not concerned. Uh, and what a blessing to know that Almighty God cares and He hears our prayers. Uh, I missed a phone call on Friday and uh, I called them back and they put me on hold. And he put me on hold, and I'm listening to elevator music. I already told you, I don't, I don't wait well. And I don't have patience well. Don't pray for me to have patience. I know what you got to go through to get patience. But I'm sitting there, tap my foot, tap my foot, tap my foot, and all of a sudden this computerized voice comes back on and says, it's going to be 27 minutes. I'm about ready to blow my brains out right now, 27 minutes. Uh, said, but... Do you want to call back? You won't lose your place in line. Absolutely. Huh? Well, they finally called me back. They said, if you're on the phone and you're the one that needs to be talked to, press 1. I pressed 1. They said, we did not hear that response. Press 1. So I pressed 1. We did not get your response. I moved to another part of the building. Press 1. And then they hung up on me. I waited patiently. I had to call back and go through the whole process again. What I'm saying is the Lord's not that way. You never get press one for English. Uh, if you speak Spanish, you never get press dos for Spanish or whatever. God knows your voice and He knows your language. Uh, I never get just hold on, He's busy. Never get that. Huh? Only God can spin the earth on his axis at that 23 degree angle there, Brother Bob. And only God uh, uh, can take care of feeding everything that gets fed uh, and telling the sun when to shine uh, and se setting the stars where they are and calling my name. Uh, and God's controlling everything. Uh, and there's 10 billion people on this planet. Uh, and if everyone calls upon him, he hears them all. Uh, we see his compliance, the crouching, the closely listening. But then notice the calamity in verse number 2. He said, He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Now the reason David's called upon the Lord, he's in a horrible pit in the miry clay. He's in a bad situation. You ever have everything you touch go wrong? You ever feel like there's no way out of the situation? That's where David's at. Say, well, preacher, what can I do? All I can tell you to do is what David did. Call on the Lord. Hmm? You say, why, why, what good's it going to do? Well, let's read on. 
Not only is in that horrible pit in the miry clay, but notice he's being carried out. Look at verse number 2. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Now, you remember when I said God crouched down there? The only way God could bring him up out of the pit, God had to get in the pit with him. God got down there in the pit with him, Brother Adrian, just picked him up and carried him out. Huh? All I know is there's been times I didn't know how to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, there have been situations I didn't think would ever have an answer. Uh, there are days I never thought the sun would shine again. Uh, and all of a sudden, here comes Jesus. Uh, comes right to where I am. Uh, and all my troubles are over when he shows up. Uh, and he carried me out. He lifted me out. Uh, he made a difference uh, in my life. Uh, in those there is no hope, he is the hope. Uh, and what a blessing he can help you to uh, Notice, if you will, the change. Now, David's in a horrible pit in miry clay. David is called upon the Lord. Notice what happens when the Lord shows up. Verse number 2 again. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon the rock. He took him out of something that had no stability and put him on something solid. Uh, then he said, uh, he established my goings. David said, I was wobbling around. I didn't know what direction to go. That's how he ended up in the pit in the first place. But the Lord brought him out and the Lord put him on a rock and then the Lord established his goings. Uh, he stabilized him. Uh, and then it says, uh, and he put a new song in my mouth, uh, even praise unto God. Uh, Hey, aren't you glad uh, some of you sit here today uh, in a horrible pit of sin? Uh, you had no stability, uh, but the Lord came to where you was. Uh, he brought you out, uh, set you on the rock. Uh, uh, the rock's a picture of the Lord Jesus. Uh, he's the rock of ages. Uh, when you got on the rock, you got stabilized. Uh, your life, which was a mess, uh, things started picking up. Uh, things started getting better. All of a sudden, that mouth you used to cuss God with, uh, now you're blessing God, praising God. Uh, he's put a new song in you. Uh, uh, you go around singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Uh, why? All oh, because God came to where you was. Uh, notice the consequences. What happened after David got changed? Look what it says. Many, verse 3 shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. You see, when God does a work in somebody's life, it's not only to help them, it's so others can see what God can do so they can get some help too. You and I that are saved today, we ought to get so full of God, everybody around us knows that God's done something in our life. Those of you that aren't saved today, i got good news, the same thing happened to David and happened to you. God can change your life. You say, I got a great life. You don't even you don't even know what life is till you meet the Lord. Amen. Uh, you can have a great life in this world, but you can have an awesome life for all eternity in Christ. Amen. But I'm interested this morning on that horrible pit. And I'll preach on that horrible pit for just a few minutes, huh? Can I say some things about this pit? It's a bad place. It's called horrible. Uh, this isn't a ditch. You fall in a ditch, you can get up out of a ditch. This is a pit. Can I say this is a horrible pit? And by the way, the only way you can ever get out of a pit is you've got to look up. Uh, but notice some things about this pit. This pit is engrossing. It's filled with darkness. Can I say this world is nothing more than a big pit? It's filled with spiritual darkness. Miss Annette and I ran by Kroger's early this morning to get the donuts for the kids for Donuts Sunday. And she made the comment when we got back in the car. She said, not many people have, have any concern about church nowadays, do they? Because they're in a pit of darkness. They think they're living life. They're working their jobs. Uh, 
uh, uh, they're they're going to restaurants. Uh, they're supporting uh, uh, sporting activities and sports teams, uh, and they're uh, doing the best they can. They go fishing. They play some golf. Uh, they go to the uh, uh, to the gossip clubs. Uh, they knit and crochet. They do all kinds of things just to pass the time with their life, uh, never realizing uh, uh, that on the other side of this pit uh, is a place called the Lake of Fire, where everybody that doesn't get out of the pits going to end up uh, this pits engrossed in darkness the sorry no good devil has blinded the minds of those lest they should believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and that the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them they're engrossed in darkness can I say most of the people you run into in our area they're good people huh they got some problems, but they're good people. They're all in a hurry. They all wonder where all these people came from in Florence. Uh, Miss Nett and I got married. 18 was a two-lane road. Houston Road was a two-lane road. had nothing but fields. Uh, there was one airplane a day flew over. Uh, where did all these people come from? Huh? You can't even get through Florence anymore. And heaven help you guys that live in Union when they turn all them traffic lights on. It's going to take you 45 minutes to get from Ryle High School to Florence Mall. Uh, I've never seen so much traffic. But see, people are just, they're just trying to live life. They don't understand that God created them to bring glory to God. They don't understand that they were shaping in iniquity and in sin that their mother conceived. Them. They don't understand that they were born a sinner and the only hope for them is in the Savior and His name's Jesus Christ. And a lot of them have a religious attitude. They know something about Christ. Uh, they know He was born in the manger. Uh, they know that He died on the cross, but they don't know why. And they've never put their faith uh, in the substitutionary death of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just in darkness. Good people grossed in darkness. Can I say this? This pit is not only filled with darkness, it's filled with danger. There's a lot of dangerous things in this world. There's dangerous diseases. Infections. Can I say there's dangerous people? Hmm. Let me say this. I throw off on Walmart a lot. Walmart's a good place to shop. They got good prices. They got a great selection. But some of them people going into Walmart, we need to be preaching to them at the jail. There's some scary people at Walmart. And where did they come from? Because I've never seen them in Florence except at Walmart. Where did they come from? You know when to go to Walmart? Eight in the morning. They're not out of bed yet. Do not go to Walmart at 11 o'clock at night. Not unless you've got a couple of patrol cars with you. I'm telling you. It's a, it's, it's a dangerous because there's dangerous people. We live in a day and age where we've got people, and there was a senator yesterday that promoted child pedophilia. Said it's normal that these kids learn about this stuff. No, you're crippled too high for crutches. Huh? Uh, you, you've gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, but there are wicked people in this world trying to promote their wicked philosophies and they're dangerous can I say false doctrine is dangerous it keeps you in darkness and it'll drag you off into hell I'm talking there's a lot of danger in this world can I say just driving down the highway somebody could hit you you wasn't looking to get hit but you got hit why? Because some of these teenagers are starting to drive. It's scary. Huh? Lexi's on the road. That's how she got a curved spine. She's hit too many things, huh? 
I'm just telling you, you don't know how much danger's out there because you don't see it because of the darkness. Hmm. Can I say there's a sorry, no good devil who is doing everything in his demonic ability and power to destroy mankind. And he's worked overtime in our government the last three years. I'm just talking about this pit is engrossed with darkness. It's filled with danger, but it's also full of death. Let's say the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Everybody in the pit's going to die. You just don't know when. Those delivered out of the pit, they're going to live for eternity. Oh, you may die a physical death, but you go to sleep here and wake up in glory. It's not a bad deal. Do you die a death in that horrible pit, it only gets worse. Can I say... Everywhere you look is death because those people in the pit have never been made alive by the Spirit of God. That's why they, they act the way they do. That's why they could go off on a whim and just act nasty and all those because they're, they're encompassed by darkness, danger, and death, and it just gets to them. And I say this pit's engrossing, but it's also encapsulating. Notice again, David said he brought me out of a horrible pit. And he said this, he said, out of the miry clay. That miry clay throughout a lot of Christianity has been called the mud of corruption. In my study on that miry clay, it's a sinking uh, a set of soil kind of like quicksand and the harder you work to get out of it the deeper you get in can I say this horrible pit it, it's floor if you will is not worth standing on you just keep sinking and sinking and sinking and the mud of corruption keeps uh, infiltrating you and it keeps bringing you lower and lower and closer to that death and I say this miry clay is sin embodied. Let me say this. There is pleasure in sin for a season. But just like certain, you know, drugs, you take it long enough, it has no effect on you anymore. You need something stronger. Well, sin has pleasure for a season, and then all of a sudden sin turns on you. Sin starts decaying your body. And you do everything in the world to quit, but you can't because it controls you. Can I say that this encapsulating horribly pit just is a pit of sinking? You're sinking closer and closer to hell. And it's a pit of struggling. Do you ever wonder how good guys always finish last? Do you ever ha wonder why evil people can continue to be evil and they get away with it but if you blow your nose in public you go to jail you're struggling because the pit honors the more evil and the more wicked people are but those that are trying to get out of the pit the pit fights harder and harder against you it's an engrossing pit it's an encapsulating pit it's a pit full of echoes if you ever been in a cave, it echoes. This pit echoes. It is roaring and raging with noise. Noise that a lot of times isn't pleasant. It's just noise. Uh, you turn on the TV, it's just noise. We stopped at Dairy Queen last night. Miss Nett was kind enough to entice me to get an ice cream. You know, I saw a guy at the t-shirt today that says 26.2. He's talking about running a marathon. I'm going to get one. 26.2 gallons of ice cream I've consumed. <laughs> uh, we went to get ice cream, and lo and behold, Miss Christina, Miss Brandy, and Squirt showed up. They got some ice cream, too. 
Well, they're all in, getting ice cream. I'm sitting in the car, and this, this guy pulls up and lets a gal out to pick up a door dash. And the noise coming out of that car, it's not music. Music can be pleasant. That wasn't pleasant. Matter of fact, Brother Tommy, if I had my 40 cal, I might have went and put some problems in you. I mean, it was, it was getting on my nerves bad. See, I'm getting old. I don't tolerate stuff. Uh, and I mean, it was horrible music. I, don't, I never even heard music. It wasn't just the boom, the boom. It was some sound coming out. It sounded like they strangling a llama or something in that thing. I mean, it was terrible. It was annoying. Finally, Miss Nett came out and I said, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. She said, we're going to eat here? I said, no. So I drove down to Culver's and ate my ice cream down there. I was not eating in that parking lot. That noise was driving me crazy. Can I say, that's all the world really has is noise. Y'all remember Charlie Brown? You remember the adults? Wah, 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 wah. That's all this world is. Wah, 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 wah. When politicians speak, wah, 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 wah. When news people speak, wah, 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 wah. When the weatherman, wah, 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 wah. You know what I'm saying? It's just noise. It's nothing that resonates and that gratifies our soul or helps us. Amen. This pit is just filled. It's echoing noise. But when you get out of the pit, you start hearing something that's sweet and pleasant and praiseworthy. While you're in the pit, it's just noise. The problem is we, we live around that pit, and sometimes we've got to tolerate some of that noise. It's not only a roaring, raging noise, but it echoes with, with a riotous lifestyle. You hear it over and over and over again. Everybody's involved in sin, and they want to uh, uh, legalize sin. They're trying to legalize marijuana, and some states they are. You know what's next? That marijuana won't do it for them. Next, it'll be cocaine. Next, it'll be something else. Uh, they're constantly going to legalize it. Uh, too many lives are being affected by it, uh, and they know they can't stop it, and they can't control it. Uh, uh, you remember when they used to talk about the opioid crisis? Uh, you know why they don't talk about it anymore? They have no answers for it. Uh, the only answer for it is Jesus Christ. Uh, if he saves them, uh, they'll no longer be dopers. Uh, they'll be sitting in church house praising God uh, 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 but they have this uh, constant constant roar uh, uh, about these riotous lifestyles uh, 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 it amazes me every other week they got a holiday so they can party and party there was one on the news last night some guy I said I've lived here all my life I've never heard of that festival uh, they're all the time coming up uh, for a reason to get high get drunk uh, so they can forget about their miserable life in the pit uh, and that riotous lifestyle is appealing. In Luke 15, verse number 13. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. See, the Satan always has a beautiful, beautiful picture of how much you can enjoy this. But he never shows you the backside of the picture and all the destruction that comes with it. It echoes nothing but raging noise, and it echoes a riotous lifestyle. It amazes me how many people are involved in all kinds of groups and events and functions, and everybody's looking for something new. And Sid went yesterday to a bowling alley where you throw footballs at the pins. I mean, it's kind of appealing, but what's wrong with bowling? The ball weighs too much, and everybody's a couch potato, and they can't pick it up anymore, so let's just take a little football and throw at it, huh? Why are they throwing footballs at bowling pins? Because they're looking for something new. A few years ago, remember, it was axe throwing until the emergency rooms got filled. Uh People are just looking for something new and different because they're in this horrible pit. Can I say the echoes, it always has a reoccurring theme. My right to myself. Reoccurring theme, if it feels good, do it. Hmm? Reoccurring theme, it's all about me. Hmm? It's an amazing thing. We 
we got cities where you can go burn down stores and take everything out of them and there's no consequence. Why? Because it's all about them. It's a horrible pit. I'm going to say this horrible pit full of emptiness. Have you ever been in a crowd of people and felt all alone? That's what happens in a horrible pit. You can be around all kinds of things, but you're not being satisfied. You feel lonely all the time. You see, when God formed man out of the dust of the earth, and God breathed in the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul, then man chose to sin. And when man chose to sin, his fellowship with God was broken, and there's a void in every man's heart. And that void can only be filled by Jesus Christ. And those in the horrible pit are trying to fill their voids, and they can't. And they feel empty, and they feel lonely. But aren't you glad when he gets you out of the pit, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and you're never alone again? Can I say this? This horrible pit is full of eeriness full of lostness feel like you're in a very dark dreadful forest trying to get out but you can't you just keep running into things that prick you that hurt you and you can't get out because you're in a horrible pit can I say you spend all your thinking your mind gets wore out you get exasperated trying to figure out how you can get out how you can have a better life I can get out of this situation. How you can... Well, friend, based on our text, you can't get out. The Lord can get you out. He comes down there and brings you out. And He's the only one that can change your life. He'll save you. He'll cleanse you. He'll change you. He'll make a new creature out of you. He'll get you out of that pit. He'll put your feet on something firm. And he'll put praise unto God in your lips. He'll give you a new song. It's not noise. It's a song. It has something to say. And he'll change your life. Say, preach how you know. He changed my life 50 years ago. He's changed people's lives all over this building. People could stand and testify to what they were as a sinner in that horrible pit. But Jesus brought them out. Huh? We got folks in here could tell you they, they didn't know what church was about. They didn't know what Jesus was about. They didn't know what the Bible was about. But God came to where they was and got them out of the pit, changed their life. We got people in here tell you they was raised in church. They was raised to know all the uh, uh, children's stories of the Bible. They was raised and they knew all the songs and they knew all the vernacular and everything. But sitting on that church pew, they realized they was in a pit. They were lost, uh, and they came to Jesus, and he saved them and changed them. And we've got everybody in between. We've got folks in here that lived a vile life, but now they live a clean life. So what's the difference, Jesus? We've got folks in here that lived a good, clean life, but now they live the best life. What happened to them? They met Jesus, and he got them out of the pit. My question to you is, are you in the pit? You don't have to stay there. The Lord allowed you to come here today because He wants to get you out of the pit. He wants you to be changed and be saved. He wants to impact your life in a way you can't even understand. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. Jesus came to the pit to deliver anybody that wants deliverance. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. Well, the best verse I can describe it says, Whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. All you got to do is put your faith in Him that He can get you out of the pit, and He will. All you got to do is be willing to turn away from the pit and turn to Him, and He'll change your life. I've seen Him do it many a time. And the reason the church is still here is He still wants to save people from the pit. If you're in the pit today, you can be saved. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. That's a fancy word. Just going to invite you to come to Jesus. Invite you to get out of the pit. Come to Jesus. He'll pick you up out of the pit. He'll change your life. Uh, he'll make a new creature out of you. Things you don't understand now, you'll begin to understand. He'll fill you with love and joy and peace and mercy. But all you've got to do is come. Come to Him. 
David called on the Lord, and the Lord came to where he was. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You just got to call on him. But if you'll come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You don't know how to be saved. You just got to be sick of being in the pit and come to Jesus. He'll change your life. Maybe you're here today and you're out of the pit, but the song isn't as wonderful as it once was. Maybe uh, you've been so consumed with the world outside the pit, you haven't been consumed with Him. Maybe today you need to come. How long has it been since you told Him you loved Him? How long has it been since you thanked Him for getting you out of the pit? How long has it been since you thanked Him for changing your life? Maybe today you need to come and just be thankful you're not in the pit. It's a horrible pit. But can I say outside the pit is heavenly. And oh, we can have heaven on earth every day. Because Jesus walks with us. How about it, friend? You're sick of the pit? Uh-uh. You can be saved today. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get a song of invitation while he's picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, I'm thankful I'm not in the pit. Lord, I ought to be in the pit and then die and go to hell. But Lord, you came by my way one day. The church service much like this. Lord, you let me realize I was lost. And Lord, you saved me that day. Changed my life. Lord, there may be somebody here today in the pit. Lord, I pray you'd open their eyes. I pray that they'd turn from the pit and turn to Jesus. Allow you to lift them out of the pit. Lord, there may be somebody here today saved, but it's been a long time since they really just appreciated they're not in the pit anymore. God, I pray they'd come and just pay homage and thankfulness to you. Maybe somebody's dealing with something else here today. I pray you'd speak to them. I pray Jesus be magnified in everything that's said and done. Bless now the invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.